Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. We have reached episode 686. This is being recorded on July 20, 2022. I'm Sebastian Peake. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walbreth. I'm Brett Van Spurnberg. I'm Kent Burgess. You can support the site and podcast distribution by going to patreon.com slash pcper. We want to thank Greg R. Seriously. I mean, Greg R. is now really carrying the channel on his back right now. I mean, his boost is just incredible. Uh, might be a slight amount of hyperbole there, but Greg, yeah, nicely done. Well struck, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Greg. Yeah. Let's move immediately to segment number one, which is, of course, Food with Josh, a.k.a. Burger of the Week. Well, this one was uh, a little different because the, the special was the pork wings again, a.k.a. pork shanks. And it just wasn't in the mood, so I had to had to make my own. I first ordered their really skinny kind of buns, which, you know, they're only there to really kind of keep it together. A lot like my self-respect. And then I had two full patties covered with, not Monterey Jack, pepper jack cheese. Yeah, there's pepper jack cheese in there. And then cover that with fresh cut jalapenos with a topping of chipotle mayo. And that was my own version of the Hayfire. And it was pretty good. I mean, I'm kind of feeling it now just because I took a nap in like 85 degree room. And, you know, when you wake up from a nap at that hot, it just... You just don't feel up to it. And so I, I topped that right off with waking up and getting a beer. So, yeah, I feel great. I'm ready for a podcast. As has been tradition for a little while now, we're going to lead with Intel Arc News. And I'm sure people Woo-hoo! are clamoring for more and more every week. Or they just want us to stop because it's really snarky and we don't even have a sample to test. But anyway... The slide of the entire lineup has apparently been leaked. We now have a look at the full Intel A-series graphics card lineup. And there's there's something missing at the top here. There's a little bit of a controversy about this. So obviously we know about a face intentionally left blank. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, they never even... Look, obviously they were never going to put anything here. That's why there's a square for it. But anyway, uh, they have the A380 that we know about. Below that is an A310. And then... Uh, Moving up into the $200 to $300 performance range, in which they just have a RTX 3050 against it, is the A580. And then there's going to be an A750, which is up at like the Radeon 6600 slash RTX 3060 level. And then an A770, which would potentially compete with or be a little bit lower, it looks like, than a Radeon 6650 XT or an RTX 3060 Ti Nothing at the 3070 level. No, nope. we note that they, both, they have those at the same wattage. So you know, it's a little suspect as to whether or not they're really close and just maybe a little bit more memory bandwidth or something. It's more memory bandwidth and it's uh, more uh, execution units. There's a, a little chart down here. But anyway, uh, Ryan Shrout on Twitter on July 16 at 6.12 p.m. Eastern from an iPhone said the following, quote, Despite some rumors to the contrary, there is no Intel Arc A780. There was never planned to be an A780. Let's just settle that debate. Uh, crying, what is this emoji called? The crying, uh, the happy... Crying, laughing. Crying, laughing, yeah. okay. And then, of course, I had to add this to the screenshot, which is uh, MLID, who's immediately like, Admit it, you guys just failed to make your, you know, larger die GPU compete with the 3070 outside of three mark blah 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 claiming that his sources knew there was an A37 or A780 coming and that they just canceled it and now they're lying about it or we could just believe Intel who says we never had one because you know they had internal names that were different so maybe they had a top skew and they decided to call it A770 and not call it A780 that's my theory or maybe they they have their top skew and they're like, okay, maybe the performance on this is not as competitive with what it should be. So let's knock it down a notch and name it something else. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So who knows? It's all marketing. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, it wouldn't get your your panties too much of a bunch because until you get silicon back, final silicon, and, and uh, or you know, 
even the first stuff coming back and, and figuring where it starts to, you know, come out at and what fixes you need to do to, you know, get a production ready. Yeah. It just, it's all, it's all names. So it's not a big deal. And not, not yeah. being able to verify that that slide was actually from Intel. Um, when you look at the power draw on those cards compared to the competitor cards, they're supposed to be competing with, um, either Intel's got some real problems or I, I just, I don't quite buy the slide. One of the two. I mean, I guess well, I really it's like the, uh, I really like the money, the 3060 TI for 399 and a 3060 for about 300. Yeah. Cause uh-huh. those prices don't match up on the AMD and then the Nvidia side at all. Yeah. Not with well, more, ones. I mean, they're, they're more, you know, better with the, um, the AMD, but yeah, you can't get a 3060 Ti for 399. That's yeah. silly. I when it launched, it had that MSRP, and of course, it launched during the pandemic, and it was never available at that price. No, but on paper, it has a launch price of 399. Maybe you could buy it from Nvidia directly for that price. I'm, I'm sure that a few units were sold through places like Best Buy at that price at some point, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, there's a table I got from video cards and we'll be done with arc discussion here in a moment. Don't worry. Uh, if you look at the, the proposed or rumored arc lineup, it's going to have the arc a 770 at the top it says the ACM G 10 GPU 32 XE cores will be available with either eight or 16 gigabytes of GDDR six on a 256 bit bus. MSRP is estimated between the $350 and $400 range. Just below that, you have the 24 XE Core 750, still 256-bit. Down at the A580, still on the same GPU, ACM G10, drops down to 16 XE Cores and 128-bit memory interface for its 8 gigs Mm. of GDDR6. So it'll be a significantly lower performance card, but $200 to $249 price point, I still don't really like those specs at least on paper versus something like i don't know a 6600 once it starts selling for below smr uh, msrp mm-hmm. but we'll have to see of course we know about a380 at 129 to 139 because that's what, what tom what if, said. what if what if what if what if it costs below asmr <laughs> it would be a very popular know, card i don't know josh why don't you tell us very relaxing Yes. If they were to sell something under ASMR. We we wait with bated breath on that one. Mm. Okay, we've heard about ARC, so we can move on to something else. Still graphics cards, though. NVIDIA, price drops. Unbelievable. Official price mm-hmm. drops from Team Green. Here's a story at uh, Guru 3D. NVIDIA plans to lower the suggested selling price of four graphics cards with the 3090 Ti getting the biggest drop, which is, you know, a good thing, because you have people like your Bauer out there saying, don't don't buy even a 3090. It's just not worth it. Stop at the 3080 Ti. Unless you're just trying to get, like, you know, records on online. But the 3090 Ti was recommended at 1999. Good Lord. Yeah, okay. it was a two-grand card. Oh, my goodness. But at 1500 bucks, it's a deal, obviously. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, and the 3090, 3080 Ti... And 3080 12 gig are going down. Now we know about the 3080 12 gig because Josh's pick last week. It was crazy. It's like, why are all of EG, EVGA's 3080 12 gigs 799? Like, regardless of whether they were the fancy liquid cooled versions or what, they were all 799. Well, that's because and Nvidia they still that are price. I think they want to get rid of them. Maybe. Do you think? I think they're getting rid of the 3080 12 gig. It didn't make any sense. Why would you offer that and have a 3080 Ti? It just doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, when they announced the 3080 12 gig, it was after the 3080 Ti, and it just sort of came out of the blue. And we actually looked at it, and I think we decided on the show when we were looking at it that it was probably silicon that just didn't quite meet up to 3080 Ti specs, and they just didn't want to, you know, throw it away, so... They took out a couple of compute units, and away it goes. Well, they they, they have a few uh, they have a few hundred dollars of, of uh, pricing that they can slot something in there anyway. Mm-hmm. So doesn't mm-hmm. doesn't particularly matter. Again, I just want everything to drop much closer to that yeah. thirty eighty level. Yeah, thirty ninety should be a thousand dollars. 
in a perfect. And, and I have I mean, to say, as a thirty ninety owner, um, I have TI Envy. I guess we'll talk more about graphics cards. Everybody loves talking about current gen graphics cards. Oh gosh, yes. Well, I mean, it's not as painful a topic as it has been. I guess. Plus, this is AMD versus NVIDIA. What could be better? The 3090 oh, Ti, a card that 18 people are going to buy, and then the 5950 XT, which is... 69. 6950 XT. You said 59. Did I? No. Yeah. 69, the 6950 XT. A Tale of Two Architectures writes uh, the FPS review. This is, of course, Brent Justice over there, formerly of Hard OCP. And... They have but a- as opposed to doing the, the old gaming, what they're doing is workload testing. Oh, really? So, you know, the people would actually be buying these cards. And uh, the trend that you're seeing here where NVIDIA is trumping AMD uh, in Geekbench Pro continues throughout the entire thing. Uh, Blender is just obscene, more than twice the performance of that uh, 3090 Ti. Ouch. Uh, yeah. It's Luxmark isn't quite as bad, but you're still it's it's significant. Uh, it likes sort of it likes the uh, memory read because well, of course it does because it's AMD. Oh wait, it's look, eight memory four. Yep, memory copy. We have a win. Oh yes, sixty four memory read or write I should say and copy. Oh and read. So in eight of sixty four, the memory benchmarks go AMD's way. Must be that well, uh, infinity cache. Must be. Yeah. Because it's interestingly, like the, the 3090 Ti, the memory is uh, 23 gigahertz, whereas the uh, AMD, it's a mere 18.8. But then you start getting back into the <sighs> GPU testing, and it's a little bit of a toss up. Uh, there, nope. There's a couple Not where wait. the AMD card comes out, but when the NVIDIA card comes out as on a win, it yeah. really comes out on a win. Mm. <laughs> hey, there are a few perf tests that uh, the AMD comes out on top here. Yes, but it comes out just barely on top, whereas when yeah. NVIDIA wins, it's it's obscene. What's They've- street price on these two, by the way? Hey, didn't we just talk about that? Yeah. Well, not the not these two particular ones. Thirty ninety Ti. Oh, Brad, what is a what is Micro Center selling the sixty nine fifty XT for these days? Yeah. You just hang on for a second here, Lando. It's, it's ten ninety nine. They raised the price a hundred dollars from the uh, non fifty. It's ten ninety nine. Yeah. So if you buy it directly from AMD's website, it is ten ninety nine. Okay. So a lot less expensive, but they just lowered the price of the thirty ninety Ti to just fourteen ninety nine. And let's face it, if you're a professional. Who needs uh, GPU acceleration? You're probably using using an NVIDIA card. But if I'm a gamer, I'm getting that 6950 XT. I'd say $400. But you're not a gamer. I have been looking at one of these for a while. FIO or FIO, however you choose to pronounce it. F-I-I-O. Has this thing called the K9 Pro ESS desktop DAC and amp. And I'm sure Kent probably has feelings about this. Looks like it has an internal power supply, regular IEC cable input on the back there. Any number of inputs. You have coaxial, you have optical, it's like a toss link, you have USB, even Bluetooth balanced outputs on this thing. Mm-hmm. What more could you ask for? And how much does this thing cost? Probably not a lot, considering it's from that company that spells its name F-I-I-O. File. How, uh... How did this fare? I've always heard it feo. Okay. But how does it look. feel? Tell me. How uh, yeah. about eight hundred and fifty bucks is how Whoa, it feels. Is that much? Oh, I... Fio, what happened? <laughs> I have heard. I have not heard this unit personally, but I have uh, seen many different reviewers who basically gushed over this unit. Okay. This is no. Uh, and there's no double entendre there, I promise. No, not at all. I'm, uh, well, we don't know. Uh, but this is no exception. He also How's the it. knob feel? Unrelated. How's the knob feel? Uh, he really liked the knob feel. It's oh, got that nice there. heavy feel to it, and okay. it's not an infinite mm. spin. It's a, it's, it's a very strange control. It is a digital knob, okay. but yeah. it's 
not infinite swing. It's very strange, but, mm. but yeah, I, I, everything I've heard about this, uh, the, the K nine pro, um, Oh, look, they're tearing it, it is, apart. Yes. Mm. And look at amazing. it. It's gorgeous inside. That is very nice. A nice black PCB. Everything looks well laid out. A lot of surface mounted components in here. Well, that's because there's two op amps and two uh, amp linear amplifiers in it. They doubled up on the Texas Instrument OPA 1612 low pass filters and then the THX AAA, uh, what, 788 plus linear amps. Mm -hmm. And from the sounds of it, it's not just because one of them is strictly analog and one is strictly digital, it's that they're doing something interesting with it. Hmm. Uh, Wireless. Mm. Yeah, and then you, you pay yeah, you all this money and then you use it with Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it comes with an antenna, so you don't have to pay extra for it. That's, that's nice. Well, I'm sure it's fantastic. It better be for $900. I always thought of Fio as that brand you could get like on Amazon, and it would be 100 to $200 for something pretty decent. Well, like their K3s or K5s, I'm pretty sure that still qualifies for. But... Uh, they went really high end on this. What is happening with this next story? Is this a joke? Uh, Microsoft hardware. <laughs> it's t-shirts from Microsoft. Some of this. this I had ours. to pick this. Oh, oh, no. I had to pick That's this just because Jeremy used our stuff. <laughs> our no, phone. this is Microsoft oh, has a crap load of swag. And so they're going to sell it to you. Oh, not this crap again. Like the, the ugly sweater that was. Oh, wait till you see the pricing. I I bet because the ugly sweater. Ooh, designed by Gavin Matu. 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 Is this yeah. meant to be like horrible yeah. looking here? Like yes. just everything about the I'm lighting, sure. and the composition of this photo is dreadful. And it's a fake Windows background too, yeah. because that's not the hill. We all know what the hill looks like, and it's not that. This looks like it's a, early it's a hill to die upon. Early <laughs> digital well. photography here, like circa nineteen ninety eight. Uh, and, and there's a huge story about how the impact that the creator had working with them and, and, and their inclusive ideology at uh, Microsoft neat. from did they the ever like, cargo is, pants or something. I would try to, oh, yeah, that lovely t-shirt you're looking at right there, 60 bucks. Okay. Did I just read the phrase norm core style? I'm yeah. Norm core really sure is a thing. Yes, did. I don't even know okay. what to say about that. Okay. Well, Sebastian. Okay. So let me get this straight. Microsoft <laughs> stopped producing their IntelliMouse, their, their yes. ergonomic <laughs> 4,000 keyboard. Preach, uh, they no longer have Sidewinder mice, Sidewinder joysticks, Sidewinder driving things, and now they're doing this? But if you want to spend 150 bucks on a pair of cargo pants, there no, you go, No, I don't to. want to do that. But I'd it's rather Microsoft. have an IntelliMouse 4.0. Or, or rather, it's Microsoft Life because they, mm. they've they've rebranded it. Yeah, it's 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 pretty pretty bad. Okay, uh, <laughs> seems cringy. It seems that way, but then when you read empowering statements like the following: "Quote: We are redefining the meaning of beauty to help kids grow up being comfortable in their own skin." End quote. Oh, and well, that makes it all work. So if you make pants. ugly trash, you can just be redefining the meaning of beauty. Yes, mm. that's fine. Mm. Yeah, I'm challenging your so, so what was the place that got in trouble when the guy said only cool kids should wear our clothes? He oh, was, he was no, like that would years be old, but... Lemon, and that was uh, skinny people. No, 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 no. It was oh, okay. Uh, oh, that, that, was that, that did that happen, was a bigger one. That did. Anyway, not like American Eagle or, you know, only cool people should wear our stuff. And, you know, mm. we don't want those other kids to. I, I don't know what's happening here. This is Microsoft Life. Yes. And they're introducing hardware, but I don't see a place to buy any of this stuff or pricing. It's just talking about like the experience and the philosophy behind these dumb products that cost too much money that are made. You you have to get an Xbox Gold uh, account oh, to be able okay. to a access no. the... Uh, and oh. It gets better if you look at the very top navigation bar. Do I have to? Okay. You can yes, visit please. their uh, cooking, cooking okay. section. Yeah. Where, I can where learn more about can... inclusion, or I can learn about skilling, which is something yes. that I am. It's a word I'm unfamiliar with. Oh, sustainability, of course. Sustainability, inclusion, community. Microsoft cooking, of course. Cooking. 
Okay. Yes. Because it's it's not just an operating system anymore. Okay. It's a life. That's right. It's it's every. I baked cake for my life. coworker. That started. <laughs> that started my coworkers <laughs> hating me because they chipped their teeth on my cake. Uh, look, these flat biscuit things are probably delicious. Those are Welsh cakes. What Those are, are these Welsh things? cakes? Welsh Those cakes. Those are Welsh cakes. They are tasty. Okay. Are her Unless you made them out of silicon as opposed to wheat. Okay. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't tried to remember. Look. This is the same world where Kanye West released a Kanye-designed plain white T-shirt for $120. Yeah, but was it, it was sustainably... A white one hundred percent cotton okay. T-shirt. <laughs> was was it for one hundred and twenty dollars? Underarm cut. Was it just like the perfect kind of like tension? Could, could across you see the your chest nipples and, on a hot day? Yeah. Well, how thick was the cotton? Was this more of a piquet, or was this like a jersey? I'd, I'd have to say that we're currently redefining what it means to podcast right now. I firmly if believe you, my drift. you yes. can't <laughs> be what you can't see. Says Amanda something from somewhere. That's in the skilling category. She also appears to be amused inside of a library. So, all right, enough uh, trashing Microsoft's ridiculous nonsense. And, and for the live viewers, I've been pasting some links of, of the wonderful clothing and how to buy it in the various chats, including something designed by MS Paint. You're going to get banned. Just sharing those links is just. Uh. It's, okay. Let's move to. I, I some... feel like you just did violence against me. I, I, if you looked at it, I probably have. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Let's move to an actual segment, and we're going to talk to Kent, who has started a blog. Remember those? And not a vlog. He's not carrying a camera around, walking in the woods somewhere. He bought hardware, and he wants to talk about why, and what, possibly where. The win is July 11. And please save this segment. It turns out that if you overclock the crap out of a 9900K, delit it, and uh, liquid cool it for 24 7 use for uh, two and a half years, it starts to die. So I started having some issues with my 9900K. Um, and I decided to just go ahead and upgrade, um, not my GPU, but just the motherboard, CPU, et cetera. So I decided to go with Intel 12th gen. And as I mentioned in the article, uh, I'm just That's one because of you're those a shill, people. right? You're, you're an I Intel am a shill, shill yes, apparently. Oh, okay. We got to get that out of the way first, otherwise. So, yes, you went with the yes. Kentucky Shroud slash Kansas Shill edition of the process. Yeah, I think it's correct. the Kansas Shill edition K now. S yes, yes. I see that. Um, Kent, I've got a, got a question about the poor 9900K. After it started to fail, did you take your foot off the accelerator, or did you just keep keep cooking it? I um, I actually clocked it back down. Uh, I actually tried it at stock, and it wouldn't run stable at stock. Was but it would it? run, it would run stable at five point one all core. Um, but the voltage I couldn't increase, do anything. I, I couldn't do anything heavy stress on it because it would just. Uh, core number four was running ten degrees plus hotter than all the other cores, um, and actually, after I tore down the system and pulled that motherboard and CPU out, I put it on a bench by itself and it actually will run okay for anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. And then it will just system will freeze, not blue screen freeze. Um, so yeah, there's, there's something going on. It might be the motherboard, but I tend to think it's the processor. Um, but the, the uh, delitted processor. The delitted yeah, processor. Be. Yeah. Couldn't be that. Mm -hmm. Couldn't no, be that. Like I say in the article, I'm just, I like to, you know, have, have a CPU that I can toy with and overclock and the 12900 KS are, you know, cherry picked uh, silicon, um, which it's less of a markup on those than it is on 
of what the old cherry picking websites uh, used to charge for their service. Um, plus, I got actually got a a, a decent sale price on the 12900 KS when I got it. It was $50 lower than they normally sell for. Um, so was it, it wasn't as cheap as the, uh, the Ryzen 9 5900X last week? No. No, it was not that cheap. N- no, it was not $320. No. That's such an insane price for that. Wow. I, I, I do not trust your, your, your fiduciary uh, uh, impulses. Uh. Well, you know, I said in the article that uh, if given the choice between a Tesla or a Hellcat, give me the Hellcat every day. <laughs> so It's the sound, isn't it? It's the look, sound. So here's what you ended up with. So I ended up with a 12900KS. Um, I had been using for some time Asus ROG board motherboards. Um, but I did not feel that the current pricing on their Maximus series of boards makes them a good proposition. Uh, the hero is actually has fewer features than this gigabyte Aorus board. Um, and is two hundred dollars more, um, plus the the power delivery on this Aorus board is amazing. It's nineteen plus one plus two design uh, using the hundred and five amp MOSFET. It's crazy, um, but I did decide to go with DDR five since I was I know the world is going that way. Can, so can I, we talk a little bit more about the, the gigabyte choice? Absolutely. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to have to be a shill here for a second because after having MSI and Asus boards and the Ryzen stuff and mm-hmm. and some uh, some uh, uh, ASRock as well, the least amount of problems I've had with any of them were all gigabyte boards, and that's what I run in my main machine. And for the price, got some pretty reasonable features. And yeah, no, I've had like zero issues. I haven't had any USB issues like, like Sebastian has with that camera and stuff. And, but no, I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I, I stay away from gigabyte with video cards, not had good luck, but their motherboards that that's like on a whole different level than most everybody else in the industry at this moment, which is talk about being a shell, but that's, that's yeah. the way I see it. Well, I I'll had talk not... to you about that because you'd recommended that 570 board. And so mm-hmm. I bought one and it arrived dead. Like I spent hours to the point where I've got it on the cardboard box. And no, there's just zero posts, not even a post code or an error code. Reached out to their support and they're like, yeah, we're shipping you a new one. When it gets there, ship the old one back. There was no questions. There was no EVGA rigmarole. It was, it was ridiculously easy. Yeah, I had not used a gigabyte board since uh, actually the last uh, AMD processor that I had for my main rig, which was an FX8350. Um, so it had been some time since I'd used a gigabyte board. I've been really impressed with this one so far, um, other than a couple of little niggles I have with the uh, some things in the UEFI. Um, but I'm going to go into that, into the motherboard in my next edition of the blog. Um, but yeah, it, it is the heaviest motherboard I have ever felt in my life. The damn thing must weigh five pounds. I'm not kidding. Um, I thought the Maximus Hero Z390 uh, motherboard for my 9900K was beefy when I got it. But this thing is just massive. Um but so I picked the gigabyte board just because the features, the the power delivery, everything I saw on it was was just top notch. Um, I did have some concern because I went with currently the fastest, lowest latency kit of DDR5 you can get, which is the uh, Trident Z5 6400, uh, 32 cast latency. Um, oh, not bad. And it was not listed on Gigabyte's QVL list, 
but I thought I'll give it a shot. Booted right up, right there, showed up in the XMP profiles. No problems at all. So XMP is was, magic. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's solved so many problems with solid, stable motherboard builds. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, it booted right up with uh, that RAM uh, at 6,400. I've uh, done some preliminary benchmarking, and it's uh, – kind of ridiculous. Um, and I will be putting those numbers in the uh, blog when I get to the various sections, but I thought I would do just the next ar- article will be a, like an overview of the motherboard um, and probably the Ram and the SSD, which I went with the XPG uh, blade S 70, uh, four, four terabyte. terabyte. Is that yes. four a three three point oh or four point oh? It's gotta be it's three, four, right? It's four point oh. Oh really? Wow, you spent yes. some it was it was on sale as well. It was a hundred and twenty dollars off of the retail price. Um I was planning on getting a two terabyte, but I saw the price on the four and just was like, Nope, that's that's too good a deal. Um, I only have to run one SSD in the whole system. And with that motherboard, it actually, it makes sense because, uh, there are, there is only one gen four, uh, NVMe slot. It has four, uh, five slots, but only one of them is gen four. Is one assuming to be a Wi-Fi adapter as well? No, no. And they're all, they're they're all under the, uh, the, 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 the gen four is under the top heat sink above the GPU slot. And then the others are under a single heat sink below it. Um, and the, uh, isn't it actually yeah, gen so, five? Hmm. Isn't it actually gen five? No. Oh no. Well, you're no, right. I mean, you're it's, obviously your SSD yeah. is not, but right. No, you're, <laughs> actually, you're right. Officially, You're right. No, is, you are correct. It? Yeah. It's a it's a Gen five slot. The top two under the the heat sink are Gen four, and then the other two are Gen three. But yeah. you know, I I've got four terabytes. I don't need any more in there. You know, uh, I had thought about waiting until the fall when new stuff comes out. But you know, I was having a problem, and prices are good on just about everything right now. So. I just grabbed what's available now and you know, I'm gaming on a 3440 by 1440. So it's not like the GP or the CPU is going to be the bottleneck for me anyway, going down the road. But the most important question, Why'd you buy a 3090 TI. No, I've got a 3090 though. Oh, okay. But I have TI envy. Yeah. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Are you going to deal with the AS? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it actually, it might actually <laughs> last this time. Okay, I've good. I've thought about it, but I've actually been extremely surprised at the temperatures I'm getting on the KS. Um, at how high they are? At how low they are. I was oh. expecting, based on reviews I had seen, um, if you're running like R23, even on liquid, you're going to be seeing somewhere between 90 and 100. And I was seeing in the mid 80s on no, uh, R23 360 AIO. It depends. Are you doing continuous R23 yeah. or just a single yeah. run? No, okay. single uh, continuous. Find that Blender stresses it more than R20 or R23 does. Do like a longer blender workload and then see as the the KS sample I have here is uh very toasty. But it's only on a 360 rad behind me. It's not on like a that's, custom liquid. That's how I've tested this one so far. Okay. Um my the, the system is actually not <clears throat> complete. Uh I got the text from Brett about the show tonight while I was getting ready to actually bend the last piece of tubing for uh, my loop. Gotcha. And so it's uh, sitting on the table in the kitchen at the moment. 
<laughs> well, we will find out more in the next exciting installment. Thank you, Kent. But for now, we're going to jump into the breach. Literally. <laughs> well, nice. The advanced edition. No less. Nicely done. Thanks. Mm. <clears throat> Jeremy, is this uh, worth playing? Uh, it's... Uh, much like chess, it seems incredibly simple when they explain the rules, and then when you get going, it becomes incredibly complex. Uh, if you already own the game, you've got the advanced edition for free. If you don't, um, it regularly runs about fifteen bucks, except it's about thirty-three percent off right now. So, at ten bucks, you're not going to hate it. Uh, it's it'll be frustrating. You're going to lose. You're going to lose a lot. Uh, it's the same guys that did uh, FTL. Uh, so it's procedural, nothing's ever the same, but the, the trick with this one is that you are the world's most horrific mass murderer because you go and you and your three pilots go and try and fight and off this alien invasion of earth. But if you fail, one of your pilots that you could choose can be transported to a new timeline, keeping all their skills. So that eventually they get better and better to the point where you can actually start to win stuff. But you're jumping to a whole new timeline, which means that you've just sort of bailed on that entire other universe, that other reality, and said, yeah, you get to die, I'm going somewhere else. Kind of horrific when you think about it in a way. Very Rick and Morty. <laughs> Except there's more than a handful of universes to bounce to. Sure. Yeah. But it's fun. It's it's ridiculously complex for a very is very simple, but very complex, and it's a bit of fun, and it's as I say, it's like it'll cost you about ten bucks right now hmm. if you don't have it. Hey, and speaking of speaking space. of ten dollars, if you pay at least ten dollars, we have. Uh, I'm guessing, Brett, did you add this this humble yeah. bundle mention? What you sure mean, the guy with the Lego stuff behind him? Oh, have yeah. have you played a Lego game? The kids love these mm -hmm. games. Oh yeah, you gosh. break apart Legos and then you you run over the Legos and they fly up in the air and they make this great clicking sound. Right, it's you hit awesome. the, the button over and over and again, you build and you're things. building with the Lego. You get to build stuff, and you get to collect the coins. And, and then all the levels kind of stuff. all seem the same in every And the game. wonderful thing is, there's no possible way that you'll step on one and end up screaming. That's true. Hmm. If you've got kids in the house, this may be a great bundle to purchase. Yeah, this may them. actually break their GTA 5 addiction. So, <laughs> get them. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. If your child is playing too much Goat Simulator, then <laughs> yes. maybe get them some Lego games. They're cheap. I'm waiting on Seriously. the Lego version of the Citizen Kane uh, game. Yeah, <laughs> Citizen I would get Kane that Lego. just for the novelty alone. <laughs> no spot. Um... Speaking of epics, Microsoft Activision, the merger just, it keeps on, it's such a protracted situation, but it's I guess giving. it's happening, probably, nearing completion at some point, and right now, a classic FPS license has reappeared for free. What could this be? Story of Arsekinka. Hexen 2? Also included. Hexen uh, okay. 2 is fantastic. It is. This is one of my so Harris first and three D games, yeah, you, you you actually had a vertical to aim on as well, which was sort of crazy. But no, they gave the first two Elder Scrolls adventures and Hexen Heretic and Hexen Two, and now they're testing out Quake Four. So if you and only on PC, the, the whole idea is that this is testing for it running on the Xbox after the assumed assume takeover of Activision for. $68.7 billion. So if you sign into your Xbox Insider, just like the Xbox thing that comes on your Windows 10 and 11 machine that you don't want and can't get rid of, you can actually get all of them for free uh, and play it. You don't have to join up the Game Pass. Uh, there's no no cost involved. It's just, you know, having to sign up for the Xbox thing, which, I mean, might be upsetting if you have never done that before, but chances are you probably have. So there you go. Grab them on Windows 10 and 11. Yeah, when I uh, when I got my original uh, Voodoo Graphics, Orchid Righteous 3D, it was uh, Hexen Two was was the <clears throat> mm -hmm. best looking game out there. It had slightly better textures than the original <clears throat> Quake, um, better level design, and yeah, no, I spent a it lot of hours a on on that one. It was it was it was it was good 
good gouge. I mean, you never had seen really levels as imaginative as as this yeah. at that time. And so, yeah, Hexen Hexen was you know it was it was a small increase in in overall uh, you know visual quality from what Quake offered. And even though it was you know based on the Quake engine, yeah, fond memories of Hexen too. Mm-hmm. Lots of secrets. <laughs> Let's move to our security corner. In our first story this week. <sighs> Have an oh. MV720 GPS tracker? You might want to dump it. Why? Well, you see, a lot of GPS devices, even the cheap $20 ones like this, come with anti-theft uh, such, so that you can disable the vehicle remotely or at least cut off the fuel. Well... Wouldn't you know it, but they hard-coded two passwords, including a master password, on both their servers and the hardware that you bought. And people have figured out what they are. So you can, with these passwords, literally send commands to a car through the SMS connection, because, of course, it's got a SIM card in it, so you can remotely control it. Appears just like it's coming from your own phone number in your own phone, and just randomly remotely disable uh, a car or, you know, cut off the fuel lines or, you know, like track you 24 seven as to exactly where your car is and how long it's been there and such. <sighs> but the fun what, what cars are affected by this. Ah, this is the thing is that for most cars, it's an aftermarket purchase. However, uh, of the several million dollar or million uh, that they've put out there, a lot of them are owned by company fleets who found a cheap way to not only include a GPS, but also to include anti-theft. So with these master passwords, a hacker could probably disable a company's entire fleet of vehicles. And the only thing you can do, because BitSight, who found this out back in September, reached out to Mike Udis to say, hey guys, there's, oh, there, there's three other less terrifying vulnerabilities as well, but these two are the nasty ones and said, Hey, this is an issue. You should probably do that and never received a reply and followed up again and followed up again and followed up again. So as of today, they said, that's it. We're going to have to put it out there. Ours also followed up and surprisingly enough also didn't hear anything, but the idea that, yeah, there's a significant amount of them out there and they're in fleets and they're fully vulnerable until removed. So yeah, the next time your FedEx guy doesn't show up, it might be because uh, the entire local fleet has been disabled. This one will be quick. It's, uh, you know what? A lot of virtual phone systems are out there, voice over IP software, and there's a lot of public domain software to handle it. Well, unfortunately, the most used bit of software for handling virtual phone systems, PBX is commonly called, has a significant vulnerability that allows remote attackers with a finely crafted request to install a remote web shell and they will completely own the system that it's installed on. Half a million servers, at last count several months ago, are fully owned in this manner. Uh, and the uh, software has been fully patched uh, by this article, at least, and uh, is still vulnerable. This also rates a 9.8 out of 10 on the CVE scale with uh, no solution in sight, as far as I know. So what you mean is Go ahead. <laughs> yes. weasels have eaten our phone system. Yes, the weasels have, have eaten, eaten the voice over IP system. No, so anyone who's worked with Asterisk has run into that message. It's one of the default <laughs> system ones or when an issue goes up. Is Weasels have <laughs> eaten our phone system. This is uh, Digi, uh, Digium, Voice over IP Services, and the, um, it, the everything that's based on the Elastic system, which is E-L-A-S-T-I-X. Which has proven to be very in-elastic. A little bit too elastic Sorry. from the regular user's yeah. perspective, but nicely malleable from the hacker's mm. view. Mm. And the bounce back on it sucks. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, this is a serious situation that if you're running a free B PBX system or something by Digium that you need to look into, you may already be owned. Very quickly, we're going to look at a review that went up recently on an Epos H3 Pro hybrid headset. 
which if you're watching the video version, you can see pictured here. And it connects to everything. What does that mean? It means it's traditional wired, 3.5 millimeter. It's USB. It's USB wireless via dongle. It's wireless via Bluetooth. It does everything. It's also expensive. So it should. And uh, it looks nice. It's lightweight. It's only about 11 ounces. Just like 309 grams, 308 grams. And uh, as you can see, kind of a stylish looking headset. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details about the design, but pretty comfortable, lightweight. And it sounds very good, though, I don't know if it's because I use 40 millimeter drivers or what, it doesn't have that real deep bass. It's there, do some frequency sweep testing. You can hear like 20, 30 Hertz on these, but it's very really? low. Very, hmm. very low. So Well, that's 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 twenty to thirty hertz. That's very yeah, low. You're describing very low sound. Okay. Are you talking uh, amplitude? We're talking amplitude. Or so uh, the <clears throat> frequency is there, the amplitude is not. And the drivers and the amplifier within these is a l are a little on the weak side. Especially the amplifier, which I had to turn up to about ninety percent for my critical listening for the review. So Ooh. The only way to get them loud enough is to do 3.5 millimeter analog cable to a decent headphone amplifier, but these are not passive in that mode. They still have to amplify the signal, but because you're feeding them a hotter signal, they can get louder. But then I started hearing audible distortion. So they're just not loud. So don't get this headset if you listen loud. If you like to listen at moderate volume, these will produce it and they'll connect to anything, but not with the real deep bass. So they don't sound super thin. They just don't have the real deep bass. Anyway, uh, otherwise they were fine. Except I saw a lot of negative comments about the software and they fixed it during the review process, at least somewhat. Because originally I started playing around with these and the software and I couldn't even get EQ settings or anything to talk to the headphones when I was connected via USB. But it would work when I used the wireless USB dongle. And then a software update came down, and then suddenly everything's working fine. So, well, by the way, the microphone is uh, dreadful. It's a 16-bit, oh, six, 16-bit, 16 16 kilohertz device in Windows, and it said tape recorder quality. And, you know, maybe like a desktop tape recorder from the 70s with the built-in microphone quality. Not great. But these do have active noise cancellation. The ANC on these is very good. Because you already have a good seal from the ear cups. Add in some decent ANC. These were better than average, easily. So on top of everything else, because there's another headset that I've reviewed that's, that has all the same features except for ANC, which is the uh, Corsair Virtuoso, which are about the same price. And those do not have ANC, but have a lot better sound. You have to decide what you want. Do you want to sacrifice that real deep bass. You don't care about bass. Maybe bass gives you a headache. $279. And yes, even during prime days, it was still $279. That's, that's, uh, that's, that seems a little high. But it I is, guess, you yeah. know, you're kind of paying for the paying for the name. and Well, and I think because you got the Bluetooth and the dongle and the cord. It's just, yeah, it's everything in the kitchen sink in here. It's just... Large drivers, big ear cups... Slots and not large, large drivers. drivers, but I thought you said it was they were extra they're large drivers. No, they're forties. Oh, they're oh. Only forties. Oh, oh. If they had used, come 50, on, get with the program, Brent. They used. <laughs> Sorry, Brent. Brent. If there's there's used, no N in my name. The dead guy. His name was Brent. The dead guy is Brent. <laughs> Fifty millimeter. I'm done. I give up. <laughs> they're good headphones, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're good, good dogs, headphones with Brent. a lot of caveats. Why? Let's put that quote in the bottom of your review. They're good headphones, Brent. <laughs> they have they have really balanced sound. Just don't expect listening to modern like when I listen to jazz with these, which I usually listen to like 1960s blue note jazz, which doesn't have a lot of deep bass anyway. You can hear no. the upright bass just fine with these. There was no problem, and they were having nice balanced sound. But when you were listening to modern like. I don't know, trap music or something with like a deep bass, like thump, thump, thump bass line. Oh, you mean when they crank the levels up to 100 and then try and make it louder afterwards? Yeah, that then yeah. it doesn't sound good. So don't get it if you listen to a lot of hip hop. Get it if you listen to, you know, acoustic music and jazz and you don't need things below like 100 hertz. Okay, uh, picks of the week. Josh, please get us started. <clears throat> so um, 
back in 2003, I, uh, I sold my original house. We moved into the place we're in now. And, uh, I had, I had rode in, in college and I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to get the concept to latest version rowing machine. And, you know, I've, I've had that thing ever since, and I still get on it three times a week and row a lot. And for 900 bucks, if you kind of, what's that? Not monetize, but if you, uh, you know, you spread out the, the payments depreciation or whatever. You know, over 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 the gosh, nineteen years I've had this. It is a very very solid construction, and this is essentially the same design except just in different colors. And uh, they they did go from the PCM three to the PCM five. That's the the rowing electronics up there that that tells you you know what your what your rate is and how many strokes per minute and you know, keeping track of workouts and then they've, they've added more things to it, but hmm. the price really essentially has not gone up over these past 20 years. Uh, even though, you know, you have slightly better functionality and you have a nicer looking design in terms of color. Mine is gray and powder blue, which it's not my favorite. This one's all black mm. and green mm-hmm. and, think you'd have rgbs on there at this point but for 900 bucks this has been a fantastic investment for me and my health uh, i recently you know I, I i took a couple of years off from it and this past april i i forced myself to to get back on you feel better i've i've lost like 15 yeah. or 20 pounds um and then the heat and came just, back you know and- what's that and then the heat came back, and it's suddenly a lot harder. Yeah, but I'm still rowing in the morning, and it's it gets oh, into good the 50s in Laramie, so it's it's not it's not horribly hot in my house uh, at six o'clock in the morning when I when I get up and and start rowing. So you know, if you value your health, you 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 want a full body workout that's easy on the joints. The Concept Two rower is is really industry standard. It's it's what people you know. It's what you know when I was rowing in the 90s they i was gonna that. say it brings back memories yeah. doesn't it yeah no well that's it was the c2 or some uh the the b model i think that that i rode on in in college but uh all of the the erg things the professionals the olympians they all use concept two and for again over the past 20 years it, it has not gone up in price in fact i think i bought mine for like 1100 back in the day and it's now 900 so yeah, they've they've improved their manufacturing and made it a little cheaper to you. And the electronics, of course, have have uh, improved dramatically. Uh, but yeah, if you if you value your health going forward, uh, learn how to you know get somebody to help you if you've never rode before, because you can hurt yourself on these things if you're not doing it correctly. You could mm-hmm. you could suffer some some back issues and whatnot. And so it uh, you know get somebody to help you out and make sure your form is good. And uh, go to town on. <laughs> All right, uh, Jeremy, do you have a pick this evening? Eh, I suppose it, it's very inspiring. It's a power supply, Ooh. but it's a decent deal on a power supply. Uh, the it's Corsair are nice, and it's white, so you, you get to have like a, a different looking one. But it's actually one hundred and twenty nine bucks because mm-hmm. they've got an extra ten dollar coupon that you can apply right as you buy. Where it. are the RGBs? <laughs> That's the best thing about it. There aren't any. I thought Corsair's white power supplies had RGB fans. Not all of them. Okay. Not all of them. Now, of course, the, my argument would be that the one thing that I don't like about it is that the ATX cable is not permanently attached because there is no reason to make that module modular. You're going to need it. But, uh, you know, maybe you're using it to uh, artificially start up and power your brand new 4090. So it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, it's a decent price for an 850 uh, watt power supply, which, unless you're going crazy, is about what you need right now. I don't know, Jeremy. I don't know if 850 is going to be enough with that new 4090. I don't know. Well, then that's what I, I said. You, you take this when you, you start it up manually and you just use it to power the 4090. You've got oh, a totally oh, oh, other oh, mother yeah. su- power supply for your motherboard. Yeah. 
That makes sense. Lee and Lee makes a fair number of cases that you can put two power supplies in, but yep. they don't always make room for two systems. So this is starting to make more sense to me now. Oh, that Debauer. Super clever. <laughs> That's it's about so 108 US dollars, it looks like. Oh, wow. You're getting ripped off. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of 850 watt power supplies in like the 80 to hundred dollar range these days. Well, I think they're starting to realize that the uh, time of the kilowatt is coming and mm-hmm. it's about time to get rid of these guys. Mm-hmm. Either you're selling to the OEMs at the 350 to 500 lot level or your kilowatt or more. Oh, and as somebody pointed out in the chat, ATX 3.0 coming. Oh, on the verge. Also true. Yeah. Uh, Who's, who's next? Who's got the next pick? Come on, it's it's not it's not rocket science, right? Me, but I was waiting for a master of ceremonies to move us along here. I have to tell you, I have not picked an OWC one in three or six four weeks. weeks. Yeah, I, that's not true. Okay. Not true at all. But this is a reasonable deal for power on the go, up to two hundred forty watts with a mm. USB port for moving, you know, getting your laptop going wherever you happen to be mm. to a 12 volt battery, but it's $7 and 76 cents. I wonder why were these exploding on people or something? I don't think so. I think they're just they're not making them anymore. Cyber now, if you use brand. this, if you, which isn't bad. No, it's if a you good use brand. The standard, I mean, it's a known brand. If you use this. Yeah, exactly. If you use the standard cable, which plugs into like your typical cigarette lighter, it's only good to 150 watts. Okay. Which makes sense, drawing through that that typical connection. If you cable it to a 12 volt battery, it's it'll up do up to its maximum, which is 240 watts, which really is probably going to be good for most typical laptop power supplies or you know other equipment that you might want to run on the go. But for seven dollars and seventy six cents, it's a pretty darn good deal. Yeah, and I have to admit, yeah, so- OWC they have some pretty darn good deals on stuff sometimes. So, so go back to that picture occasionally. And Occasionally, it's a like question. a okay, it's on. like a whoop thing for technology pieces. Uh, can 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 you actually unscrew those a bit and uh, and uh, be able to? Yes, Josh, you get can. your tongue to connect the, <laughs> the poles. Uh, sure, Josh. Yeah, if you just wanted to get let me your, let me test if you this. Wanted, <laughs> Josh, if you wanted to use your specialized nipple clamps on those, I'm sure that you could. <laughs> How make sure to leave the fan in? on though. You don't want it to overheat. You don't want it to overheat. They offer free shipping on this. What's the uh, shipping situation? For $7.76, are you really pushing for free shipping? What if it's like $20 shipping? Check out now. Are you you riding me, Peak? Uh, (laughs) Yes, check out. Let's just see. Now, can you reverse the polarity on the inverter in the case of emergency? Oh, my God. I can't even give you guys a gift. A gift. It's seven dollars, and I have to pay. Oh, for this shipping. is a gift I'm giving. Okay. Any more Kent, on that topic? Save us. Kent? Okay, Kent. No, your no, pick we're good. This week. Power, power up. So, uh, since Jeremy has mentioned the age of the kilowatt is coming back, I'm recommending graphics cards because they're cheap right now, and EVGA has a lot of really good deals on their site. And if you use an EVGA associate code, which you can find just by searching EVGA associate code, right. you can find someone who's listed their code. <laughs> yeah, on like every EVGA post on Twitter. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's it's an extra 3% off. It's not much, but okay, it'll cover it's shipping. Money. It's, yeah. Get yourself uh, man, some they've got, uh, liquid cooled speak, uh, 12 gig 38. Speaking of shipping. Yeah, it's a good deal. Wait, what? Wasn't this my pick last week? Well, you picked specifically the thirty eighty twelve gigs. I just selected the whole page. (laughs) (laughs) Thereby blocking anyone from further picking it. (laughs) That's right. Should have thought of that, Josh. Dang it! Shut up. Yeah, my pick this week is uh, just EVGA, the brand. (laughs) EVGA, the brand. I pick graphics cards. No, I okay. pick GPU. Period. I actually had a more GPU. reasonable one, but they were sold out, so <laughs> so uh, that was a panic. Okay, prices have been elastic a little bit, mm-hmm. it's bouncy lately. Speaking of prices, okay, people sometimes ask, "What's a good pair of computer speakers? Should I get active monitors? What should I do?" 
There is a surprisingly good pair of computer speakers from good old Creative Labs. The old Sound Blaster guys. This is the Creative Labs Gigaworks T20 Series 2 2.0 multimedia speaker system with base X port technology. Now, if you're just listening, it's a small-ish speaker. It's about the size of the Bose like Companion 2 speakers. They are two-way, so you have a small bass driver and a soft dome tweeter in each. There's some nice you know, functionality because there's pass-through for the headphone jack on the front. So you don't have to fish around behind these things. There's also a microphone input that passes through. And they just connect up through standard analog output. I've seen some negative comments about some of these with regard to firmware updates and stuff. These are just you know, speakers, this particular model. There's other models in the series, but the T20... Right. Series are two. Are these the ones with the the Kevlar um, woven? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Woofers. Yeah. I've, I've, I've certainly I've had a like set it. of these. I've had a set of these for about ten years, something like that. Anyways, maybe eight years or something, and they sound really, really good. I paired them with a small sub as well. I did a, just a you know hack splitter and just sent it to the subwoofer as well, and it freaking rocks in in one of the work workrooms. Just don't let downstairs. your toddler push in the the tweeter cones yeah they have a, they have <laughs> a honestly, um, protector over them these by just, default but it's not exactly it's like there's a typical a, cloth. yeah you can see the, yeah, not the push pins. Proof, no they're not toddler by themselves these things are really outstanding i, I have to agree yeah, Brett, really I'm glad you picked the them sides. this week because they're so yeah. good and you've had them for so long <laughs> thanks for bringing it up i've me- been meaning to talk about them so i oh, appreciate okay. that anyway the retail price on these is 100 i paid somewhere <laughs> around 80 or so when i bought them huh? two or three years ago and they're 67.99 new on amazon and that is basically the renewed price why would anybody in their right mind buy them amazon renewed right now for 62.95 when you could buy them brand new for 67.99 they're excellent well hell get two get two pairs then yeah and then hook up those rear well, I'd channels. I'd be tempted to, to get those T40s. Yeah. I, you would be. I would caution you on that because you'd think, oh, these are definitely better because they have double the drivers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you think? Mm-hmm. I And they're 40% off. They're only $89.99. And definitely, if, if bass is your priority, they do have more bass. I don't think they okay. have as balanced of a sound. Hmm. Just me. I think they got it right mm. with these T20s. I think the T40s were a little boomy. I think the T40s. So they, they kind of boom. figured that you, you get the, the pair and you skip the the woofer. It's just not. It's not enough well, base to skip a sub. So just get the T20. It's, okay, so it's still not that much, but all right. No, I mean, there's only so much mid base you can tolerate, and I think doubling it would probably yeah. be too much. I think. Yeah, you're you don't right. want a huge hump at 100 hertz. It's just not a <laughs> great sound. You want it. Speak down for yourself. At like 40 or 60. We're we're talking yeah, about Josh. You listen Josh. to dubstep. <laughs> My God, <laughs> I never knew that. I mean, I'm humping it. Hundred hertz. Uh, um, okay. Well, on that note, dubstep. we are going to end the show. It's been another one. Good night. Bye. Let's move to an actual segment, and we're going to talk to Kent, who has started a blog. Remember those? And not a vlog. He's not carrying a camera around walking in the woods somewhere. He bought hardware, and he wants to talk about why and what, possibly where. The win is July 11. Kent, please save this segment. So, uh, since uh, Sebastian has stopped talking abruptly, <laughs> all right, hold on. That oh. was that wasn't Wait. the strongest <laughs> opening. Let me uh, fix your. Right, let's go back. Perfect. You just sort let's of go softened <laughs> out and turned. What do you mean? <laughs> I said. You anymore. <laughs> I said. Kent, save this segment. That was Kent, your cue. I feel, okay. I feel for you, man. I felt right, it was cold. I couldn't it was a, hear him. Same like, he just softened out and that was like, I know. what's he going to say? <laughs> oh, somehow okay. in the middle of the show, we've managed to do a recold open. <laughs> a recold open. That's right. Quick, Josh, do some ASMR. He's going <laughs> ah, 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 That's it. I'm done. <laughs> okay, he's back. Ooh, nice shorts, too. 
Are those all right? Good night, everybody. <laughs> are those comfy shorts, Josh? <laughs> They're well, extremely they comfy shorts. shorts. Did I tell you it's hot? Why did Why did you like? You're talking about his article. Kent wouldn't talk. Well, I threw it to Kent. It's and he was just happens. silent. Well, like, I caught I that, and I was like, but then he's like, well, since Sebastian just decided to drop off, I guess I, I was like, oh, he's going to talk about his article. I'm going to throw my headphones down and get another beer because it's freaking hot. <laughs> it's, well, we'll that, I come back to my sexy white legs streaking across <laughs> yeah. my office trying to get to my chair. <laughs> <laughs>